Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS. Just me and the nerds here. I hope everybody's had a good week, and we got an exciting, very exciting batch of uh, part two of season five episodes for you guys to go over today. But uh, before we get started here, I'm just going to go around the room and give a quick introduction for all our new subscribers out there. Uh, first off, we'll start with our guy, Captain Tarkin, who really is a legacy Star Wars fan from day one. So we got our guy, Tarkin, here. We have our neutral fan as well, who we're trying to convert over to being from being a casual to a pretty hardcore by our guy DP Brown here. We have one of the Star Wars hardcores and our production guy on the buttons, our guy Hitch down here. And of course, it's me, see Mitch here on the production side and also running the show as far as showrunner. So, yep, that's all four of us guys, the nerds, and we are part of Carbonite Bounty BS. So before we even dive into this, we're going to let DP let you guys know how to find us. Nerdsidecopedia.com, people. That's where you go. Get all your links to all our, your favorite social media outlets. We're at Nerdcyclopedia on Instagram, Twitter, and also on Facebook. Leave us some feedback at nerds at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast outlets, we are on Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, um, iHeartRadio. Um, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you're hitting that um, notification button and also hitting that subscribe button. So anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Leave us, give it, join our group. We're we're on Facebook. We got a Facebook group dedicated to Carbonite Bounty BS Star Wars stuff. So make sure that you join in a group and you know we'll we'll le leave a comment or two. You know we'll um you know hit you back and everything when we get that chance. And we love the interaction and the feedback that all you guys. Bring it right now. Appreciate that, and uh, you know, guys, what a what a group of episodes, and what a way to what a way to end it. You know, that we'll, we'll get into that cliffhanger there and some of that scene. But before we even get into that, uh, we'll start off with uh, Ken. What, what were your thoughts about this batch here, and, and your first initial reaction? Well, you know what I really loved is the uh, the younglings and how they um, got got over on Hondo. I mean, it was that whole the whole scene with the. Um, like the, cir like the circus thing, how they built on that and then just continued their, they just bonded together and really became a fighting force. I mean, it was really good through this whole, the whole set. Um, all the pirates and um, Grievous coming in there. I mean, a lot of excitement. I mean, every episode had a little bit extra something for me. Uh, uh, kept me watching. I think I kept going. Uh, I think I did like three or four in a row, just, just, just watching them, but great. Um, as we're calling it, an arc of story and continuation of uh, Asuka and the, and the younglings and how they're, uh, you know, sort of working together on their own because Kenobi's out of it. I mean, Kenobi's not really helping anybody because he's got his own troubles. So, you know, I really I really like this this set. It's very good. What about you, Hitch? I love it when they bring Hondo into the mix. <clears throat> Hondo's like my Hondo's my dude. And uh, I, I love I love that he gives us the line. I'm not as young as I used to be. But I am old, which was such a great line. It's like one of my favorite lines of, of all Star Wars. Uh, I, I love the relationship that he develops with Katuni. Watches her build her lightsaber. And like actually, actually seems to be pretty genuinely nice to her, which is really, really nice from a pirate, right? Some genuine nice emotion from Hondo. Really enjoy seeing him. Uh, and oh my goodness, this Mandalore, this Mandalore set to end this this cycle of episodes. You, what can you say about it? It felt like. It was a Star Wars movie. Again, I, I think I said this about Umbara in Season 4. It felt like Clone Wars 1. If that was Clone Wars 1, this is Clone Wars 2. This is the set of episodes. You get Maul, the Mandalorians, Boca Raton. Uh, you get... Grievous. <laughs> <laughs> you get Grievous. You get everybody uh, all converging here. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, and, uh, and then my dude, Emperor Palpatine, comes on the board and we talk about what an excellent tactician Palpatine is. This is the level of surprise move you have to pull to get his attention. And man, do you ever regret getting his attention right away, right? Wow, what a set of episodes, man. Right. DP? Yeah, the, you know, it's, um, um, Ken Tarkin was, you know, um, talking about the younglings. That that was that was pretty decent. Um you know, that, that set of just the way that they, the camaraderie and just them developing together from the cliffhanger we had from the past, you know, batch of episodes and stuff, how that came together, how they joined forces and everything uh, with the pirates to, to be grievous and stuff. That was, that was really nice to see, you know, just continued that Star Wars, 
you know, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the goodness of it and everything. And just, you know, the, the, the character development, as far as it, um, it was a little bit of a slog with, um, the R2D2 and, um, them on the, um, them on that planet and everything. So I was a little, just a little, you know, it, it was, it was, a time waster for me. And I'm like, okay, we're really getting into some kids stuff right here, you know. Um, but I, you, you know, if in order to get the the whole picture, you got to watch the whole thing. So you know, it was some good elements in there when they um found the one um clone and you know um changed him and everything. So I thought that 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 plot was pretty decent. And then you got get to um Maul, his brother, and those elements in Mandalore, you know. Um, Satine and um, you know um, her her thing being taken over, <sighs> guys. <laughs> Palpatine episode was probably the best episode I've seen in this series so far, man. That was some <laughs> that was some good stuff right there. Uh, <laughs> that was so good. Oh my god, when he when 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 they when they showed him. You know, saying bring me, um, uh, the, bring my cruiser around or something like that. Something, something he said to that effect. You know, he wasn't seeing like the whole episode. All we got was like, um, you know, Maul and, um, you know, him doing his thing and everything. And then we got Palpatine. Or we got uh, Chancellor. You know, um, you know, a, a flash of him. And then all of a sudden he came with his his hood and <laughs> with his two sabers. You know. Um, that was some really dynamic animation there, you know. And the episode before that, with the battle between um Vizsla, I believe, and um and uh -oh. Maul, you know, uh, as far as the battle for the Dark Saber, you know, the, what 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 uh, T Mitch was saying, you know, I got my answer to the question, you know, how the how this thing just gets passed along and everything. Um, and he be, and Maul, you know, just just took him over, you know. I mean, and I guess. The, the weakness that Maul and his brother say they have honor, you know, the the death watch, you know, the their weakness was honor. And they was going to, you know, exploit that. And sure enough, they did because it was a stupid thing to, to um to to accept his 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 battle thing, because, you know, Maul was just going <laughs> to it was it was just almost a no uh, no no win situation for Vizsla. Maul was just going to beat him anyway, you know, and then he ended up did doing that and taking over like, you know, um, or behind the scenes person, as far as, you know, his takeover of Mandalore. And then, like I said before, the, the, the fight between him and him and him and Palpatine, that was just, oh, that was awesome. Right. And I feel the same way. I mean, I kind of forgot when I saw that episode, the last episode of Palpatine came out. I mean, it, it was, to me, it reminded me, it was reminiscent about the finale of the Mandalorian. When uh, Luke came out, you see him just kind of cruise up and then he just dispatches of everybody left and right. And then, you know, faces up with Maul and it's to see that, you know, I mean, he really is pulling the strings. Even when Maul tried to bow to him and let him know, like, it's his master, it was quick with it. He said, no, you're not. You know, there's a role, yeah. there's two. Yeah. You're no longer my apprentice. And it was weird because he didn't even sense him, you know, that whole time until, I guess, his rise to power. So it's weird. It was kind of like a Dragon Ball Z kind of feel like he kind of more hit his power level for a while. And then when he got to a certain confidence with um, his brother Savage, it seemed like Palpatine sensed it. And, you know, as he saw his power growing, he had to dispatch of him quickly. So, you know, to leave the cliffhanger there with the kind of lightning like the Luke Skywalker lightning. I thought that was epic, but the animation and the fight scenes, I mean, yeah. this is the Palpatine you wanted to see, you know, other than that, you know, we'll get into he, it, that Yoda fight. He, he was, was he's, he's vicious, he was, man. He was quick. He was he's, smooth. Yeah. He now, was just like, whew, slicing efficient. and dicing. Yes. I was curious, uh, when we watched this series, how much, like, <clears throat> how much of a surprise is it to <clears throat> the viewer who saw this, right? If you're looking at watching it in, in the order of its series, right? In the order of its uh, chronologics. The viewer, how surprised is the viewer going to be when Palpatine pulls out a lightsaber later, right? Like you're saying, he yeah. fights Yoda later, and we know that because it came out in 2005. But it seems obviously they mean for you to know the whole time in Episode Three, right? This is like this has to be. This is the first time we have no shadow of a doubt. Palpatine not only is like this, this like master manipulator he's not only extremely powerful he's deadly with a lightsaber right we know that about him now so that whole scene that whole scene in episode three where they're preparing to go to face him is all fraught with more like mm -hmm. more Tension. ominous foreboding 
mm-hmm. they're saying, we don't really need you to do this. And the whole time you're going to be thinking, yes, you do. You need Anakin. You need to bring everything. Bring them, bring it all, all of it. Like, what do you think? Like the younglings, everybody needs to come. You need to bring everybody. Yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> and, and that's really going to change my perspective of that scene in a way I can appreciate now. It's going to be great. Oh man, I'm excited. So why I was I was wondering why did uh, Palpatine's sort of relationship with Maul change, like from Phantom Metis to now? Like, well, remember he, he was cut in half and left for dead. When you're weak as a, as a Sith, you don't you're abandoned. And the, the power level, remember, yeah. he was like at a level here, and then when he saw um, Dooku, that was like a fledgling Jedi that was here, he, the Sith, you know, they it's kind of it's savage almost. They kind of just throw him to the wayside. He just threw him out right yeah, then. That's how the Sith are. There's a rule of two. And if you don't have the power or there's somebody more powerful that they can manipulate, they throw yeah. you to the wayside and there's another one up. Sex man up. And Because I was wondering, is that the same thing that was going on with Dooku? Because it was. Dooku, that was the Anakin that, thing. And now Anakin. So he so Palpatine's saying, OK, I'm going to I'm going to go with Anakin because he's his power level is and I haven't even begun to train him yet. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Begun yeah. To tra- He's already higher than Dooku, although we've seen him sort of get bested a little bit by Dooku right. so far. But so that's the same thing, right? Yeah, and that puts more emphasis on that fight because you see the growth of him with the lightsaber from now to the movie, and it's the from, same thing yeah, with Palpatine. You know, really it's, yeah, it really puts that fight like we're discussing. It puts three in a way more perspective because until now, even as a casual. You're like, how's Palpatine doing all this is lightsaber? It's this old guy sitting back. So yes. it kind of puts more respect on him. And, you know, I know this is a Clone Wars show, but it just it, – now just even watching that scene disappoints me more for episode nine. Like, <laughs> how does he not – like, how does he not show us – like, you know what I mean? This combat? Give us the sabers. I, Let I, him – he yeah. has to take her on. Yeah. You know, to, to me, officially now seeing that episode, my rating goes down a point from episode Ooh. nine. Wow, so, so I'm docking so, it a full a full point. So that. so if you take a point away from episode nine and I give a point to episode three, we've achieved nerd equilibrium through this through this <laughs> we, pathway we through the through the whole point. cycle. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you, you, so you, you tell me take yours, to. take your yours. Yeah. You do. I'm I'm going to throw it on three now because you have to. I mean, the, how proficient he is. And then I guess he's overpowered in nine, and we'll get to that. But I mean, he's like a super saiyan almost, and he doesn't use a saber. I mean, that's a weird. That's what we're calling for. So I know we'll get to that. But yeah, I mean, that, that only, Palpatine uh, arc was phenomenal. The only Dragon Ball Z trip that was missing was when uh, when Palpatine showed up and like messed with those, like and, you know, killed all those Mandalorians. Uh, Savage should have been like, oh, 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 oh for like five right. minutes. That's it. That was the only thing that was missing. Yeah. Really awesome. Well, Maul kind of tripped out when he seen him. You know, when he sensed <laughs> yeah, him, he was like... Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a lot like Vegeta getting scared of uh, Frieza first. Right. That's exactly what you're talking... It's exactly right. the same thing. I got you. I got you. How about the um, appearance of bo I mean, we, we get her finally, you know? Right. So, um, I mean, that was, that was, you know, that was a thing to see. And her development from, um, you know, what we see in The Mandalorian on, and, and what we see from here and everything... Um, how she, how she does have a little bit of an independent streak, you know, and it was great to see that it, seeing, seeing how these things, you know, you watch them backwards in a way you watch Mandalorian and you got to go back and watch this to see how things develop and stuff. If you watch this in chronological, God bless the viewer who watches this in chronological order or who will one day and see how this whole story goes, because I mean, they're in for such a, such a good treat, you know? Um, but yes, yeah, so we, we see, we see her and her, um, um, you know, her and Vizsla, you know, um, um, sort of, you know, plotting to, 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 to go against Savage and, you know, Maul and everything. And like I said, that just goes to crap when, you know, um, Vizsla, you know, in, ends up getting beaten by Maul. You know, I, I just knew that, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. You know, plot dynamics and plot armor dicks hey Maul is gonna win that. But still, you know, you got the stakes, you know, still there and everything. And he should have he should have never, he should have never, you know, agreed to that. But by his honor, he did. Yeah. It's like a and weight put- class thing. Like the force, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like to, if you can't fight someone that has telekinesis, it's never gonna be a fair fight, ever. So it's just, they should, you know, it's a trap. Yeah. It's a it quote, it's respect, a Star Wars yeah. Admiral. Yeah. Especially when they know what to do with it too, you know, when they when yeah. they're I mean, that's, that's one thing to have the ability, but when you're trained and 
you have you're intuitive to it you, you can't beat that you can't beat that Mm-mm. yeah and it's a great you know because it kind of ties in now you see why at the end of the mandalorian it, she's so you know, hell-bent on getting that because at this point you know yeah, Mandalor- the yeah, mandalore is, is, yeah. is a planet mandalore is a planet is kind of like gone but she is trying to resurrect as you see him kind of on outer skirts she's trying to bring all mandalorians together and reestablish the order so with her trying to get that and obviously with then having it he doesn't understand the lineage of how important that is with her sister being you know as we know now royal which i'll tell you what that death scene of hers man how he just picks her up with a force and and puts it through her. I didn't think they'd show that on Disney or on TV. But, you, know. you, 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 you guys, uh, you got me with the text and everything. I was just like, wow, Maul is pissing me the off. You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I like Satine. You know, she she had a relationship with, with Obi. You know, I mean, I I and then you're gonna go ahead and just like um, you know, uh, take her out and everything. Oh yeah. man, that was just brutal, brutal. And he- you know, and to Ken's point, you know, this is where I start to see, I feel like, the crack in Obi-Wan because it I, it seemed like there was more than friendship there. Like there was kind of like a like a like a love almost. And yeah. to see him finally suffer, I think, you know, maybe this would drive him kind of to that hermit status that we maybe see Luke in mm. episode seven in because he start, you know, this war, the Jedi outside of maybe, you know, Yoda who's who's starting to feel people, things falling apart, suffer. You're starting to see now your your knights and your you know council members really suffering loss, and I think that's starting to like we're saying it's really starting to get to the Jedi now, and you know this is already done on you know not the council's wishes, so mm. it's one of those things that he's starting to suffer, and I think this is when the Jedi really starts to become stretched and almost broken at this point. This is like that first kind of big crack in the armor. I mean, with the fall of, you know, the um, Republic right proxy, this is just a sad story. You know, this yeah. this is this is sad sadness. And you see the little like you was talking about cracks and everything. You see the cracks just go with um, what you thought was like a secure structure. It's such a scary thing when um, when you got Maul, you know, instituting a, a figurehead for what he he's going to step back and actually be the the um you know ruler and everything but he has his figurehead i forgot the guy's name and everything but he institute him after he beats you know vizsla and stuff you know he um him and you know him he he, he joins force with the death watch but knowing that he's going to end up taking him out <laughs> you know mm-hmm. when they both was trying to plot against each other okay we're going to you know, kill Savage and Maul, and then, you know, Savage and Maul, okay, we're going to take, um, you know, Viz out, you know, at some point, you know, and then um, we see Maul win, and to see all those people just, what, what, what I'm going to say here, just, um, because uh, because they was all about peace, the team was all about peace and everything, you know, um, and they didn't want to handle that that way. But the Death Watch, they just wanted to bring war, war, war. I mean, the parallels of things that's like happening, you know, nowadays and stuff is just is kind of it's just crazy, you know. I'm just I'm just seeing a whole bunch of bunch of just you know just different crazy stuff going on here. Right. Yeah, in, the, in in Maul and and his brother, I mean, they're not they're just thugs. Right? Yeah. They're, right, they're not leaders. They can't lead. Um, they don't even know who their leader is per se. They're just taking out people that don't agree with them. So they're just right. uh, they're they're the gangsters. So it's like I know I understand what you're what you're what you're feeling, uh, DP. Like Maul is just pretty obnoxious. I mean, he's just going around whacking people for his own just because they don't agree with him. Mm-hmm. He doesn't like the way they think, but he has no leadership capability. Uh, no. that that's what's missing and yeah. palpatine who's like sitting over here in the corner grinning <laughs> ear to ear in his chair just waiting for the moment when he's going to come up and just take over everything and and wield the sword of the empire and it's good it's so it's i mean that's what i so that's me super fan well not super fan but just like old school fan that's what i'm looking for in all this i'm looking to see where the story that i sort of fell, fell in love with is how it how it came about and this, these are all leading up to it so it's, yeah. that's uh, i like it's that's that's the, the uh a nice runway yeah yeah it's it's exactly it's, it's launching things off real nice and smooth it's filling in blanks answering questions showing me cool stuff that i could only you know i couldn't even imagine you know couldn't yeah. even imagine where 
you know, what I saw Palpatine the first time, you know, in Empire Strikes Back, I was like, wow, who's that guy? You know, <laughs> what's what's his story? Because yeah. they talk about, I mean, Tarkin, Tarkin, Tarkin was the first person that mentioned him in A New Hope in The Emperor. OK, The Emperor. We never saw him. And then in Empire, we saw a hologram and it was all twisted and old and wise Vader you know, kneeling to this guy. <laughs> He's more yeah. powerful than Vader, who you thought was Vader's, all powerful. Yeah, Vader right, right away is like, you are in charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like how did how does that happen? Where who is this guy? So that's that's what all this is leading up to. So you've got Palpatine and you have all the and you got our heroes, you know, Obi Wan and Anakin and you know how they're developing. But then the real thing is Palpatine, how he became who he is. That's yeah. It's great. And it's interesting because this is another chess piece for him. You know, he basically, Maul does a legwork for him. He gets the outer rim basically together yep. as through a crime syndicate. And now that he sees that basically that Maul has created a band of planets and basically a network of basically the, the underworld, he swoops in and says, basically, thank you for doing that for me. Okay, <laughs> that's I'll thank you. That right back. I don't need that. to do work. I'm going to go ahead and just take this from you. <laughs> Goodness, man, yeah. Alpatine, he's all the, that dude. The, yeah, all the pirates and the and the thievery and the, the gangsters. He, he just but just but it, it. but in Palpatine's defense, if these guys are are like afraid of Maul, they should be probably be very afraid of him, right? right? So when you think about it, it's really just a big. There's always a bigger fish, right? Isn't that that's from that's from Phantom Menace, right? There you go. Yeah, it's always yeah. a big. Uh, uh, the, the story behind the story and everything, but Palpatine has a has yet to really reveal himself as 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 I guess the overall emperor and everything because that hasn't come yet, you know. But I mean, when the um, I guess when the galaxy you know sees this, <laughs> and it's just it's and, and and the the fall of Anakin is it's just coming. You know, we're 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 gonna see that, you know, in Revenge of the Sith and everything. But the lead up to that, which I'm assuming like the last couple of seasons of Clone Wars is gonna um be, it's just oh man, it's just such a sad story. If you could just take this overall and just see the whole perspective of the sadness of this, you know, and whatever you know, George Lucas and you know had in his cranium about how the fall of empires happened, the fall of you know, countries and the fall of um you know, well-built societies slowly, you know, break down. Um, this, this is, oh, I, I, I see why you guys love the universe so much. All right. And, and that's an interesting segue into mm -hmm. our next point. I want to bring in after our intermission here, but uh, just saying how things tie together, you know, watching this episodes and this will be directed to Ken, you know, the uh, Obi-Wan fan club, number one <laughs> fanboy of Obi-Wan. So I'll, I'll have a point I'll toss to him after the break here about Obi-Wan that's, it's kind of history repeating itself, and I'll explain why here after the break. So, guys, stick, stay tuned. Uh, we'll read back with you shortly. Back in two and two. Yeah. Now, if you love blood, gore, and violence, please watch Invincible. Were you disappointed by Mortal Kombat blood and violence? Do you enjoy blood and violence as a cartoon? Well, come check out this cartoon. On Amazon. Amazon just got some really good stuff as far as this show. You got Omni Man, you got the fake Teen Titans, you got the fake Justice League. Man, what more could you want? Come watch us on the Nerd Psycho Comic Flick Show. All right, guys, welcome back from the break here. Um, we're back here with the part two of our finale of the season five uh, second set. So before we went to break, I had an interesting question I wanted to pose over to Ken. And it's really um, about Obi-Wan and his character work. And it really brings me, you know, like I said, parallels to what we see happens to Luke and, you know, kind of what happened to him in episode seven with him shutting himself off the force. So what I wanted to pitch to you is now watching these episodes – I actually have to apologize to Obi-Wan because I, I think I finally figured out his arc as a character and as a Jedi because we see the first loss with him losing his master at a young age. 
second loss being the team, which was maybe a friend that somebody he had affection for. And the third loss being him losing Anakin as a Padawan, as a friend, as another Jedi. So I guess my thought to you is, do you think that all this loss and him not having the ability to basically stop it, kind of like Anakin's arc, kind of like Luke's arc, which led him to exile from his, um, you know, lost Academy. Do you think that's why partially he shuts himself off on Tatooine and really just watches Luke? But you know what I mean? I, I just feel like he's so underpowered, even when he faces Vader for that sacrifice at the end, because he shut himself off in the force just because of sorrow. So, so he had three huge, breaks um they say a a human like us like a normal human can really suffer three major breaks in our psyche before there's some change and i think what happened is he had these big losses these big chunks taken out of his his uh mentally taken out of his uh out of his personality out of his mind i don't know what the what the right word is but he lost he lost his leader he lost his mentor he lost his love, potentially, and he lost his charge, someone that he was in charge of, that he failed. So three basic failures. And when Yoda tasked him with, you got to watch uh, Luke, you're going to go watch over him. He volunteered because he's like, I can't handle this anymore. I need a way out. And it just gave him a an exit pass so that he didn't have to give up or sacrifice himself or fail in any way he was given this mission and it suited his his purpose he now, was a little reluctant too um at, at in first, the beginning at first it, yeah it, he needed that um qui-gon uh whisper to to give him the the courage to to do it right qui-gon like whispered in his ear and said no this is you need to protect this child you know this is important so that that helped him with that mission but he was reluctant but i don't think i mean i don't know that he necessarily went um uh easily or uh agreeably into the great good night i think he still had a lot of he still want and, and that'd be a great story and i can't wait to see that right in 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 this in the spinoff and the in the kenobi story is what did he do for 28 years, 26 years on Tatooine. What did he do? I mean, he didn't just sit in a cave. He must have done something, right? Maybe, maybe he had another love. I mean, you know. Um, something. He, 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 who knows what he did, but yeah. he did. Once in a while, he'd shoot over and watch the Lars homestead, make sure Luke was, you know, coming up. He got. He probably spent time at uh, Toshi Station, where Luke spent a lot of time and met Biggs. And uh, I forget what the girl's name that they hooked up with over there, but I'm sure he spent time watching him there. And, and maybe he maybe he uh, was hidden as a merchant or something. And maybe he actually interacted with Luke. That would be cool if he actually interacted with Luke in some ways. And Luke didn't even know who he was, you know, he was kind of hidden in the. But I I don't think he accepted it as graciously as it looks. I think he still had a lot of angst about it but i think the three distinct moments of failure in his life really led him to think that this was going to be his way out that he didn't have to accept he didn't have to face failure anymore because he was given this very simple mission by yoda and that was it right so what would look look would look as would look to him as far as like him being the power was more more of an emotional you know um empowering in a way you know um and it really uh, if if they configured the arc and everything for him to to be how he was you know i guess eventually in in revenge and every and everything and that's a, a really great way to tie that emotional you know complexity as far as far as that you know as far as obi-wan so yeah. I'm, I'm 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 there for it yeah. and he would have kept training too he would have kept training and practicing on his own uh, because he I think he knew at some point he was going to face his Padawan again, that that was all going to come around because everything comes full circle, you know, and that's the reoccurring theme in all of this. And it doesn't matter what you're watching Mandalorian clone wars that there's always a cycle. There's, oh, 
there's always a circle. Everything comes around, you know. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. And this is all yeah. this yeah. all big circular thing. Everything comes around. So don't piss too many people off. Nope. Again, Ken, some Ken, nobody learns any lessons in this. It just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Nobody learns anything. That's why they keep doing new series because <laughs> we get to take mistakes. <laughs> Make twenty five episodes out uh, of the mistake. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. glad they're making them, but I disagree that nobody learns anything here. In fact, you know, I agree. I agree with T. Mitch that this this really informs so much of the arc of Obi Wan Kenobi, and it informs so much of what what he is is the stuff Anakin is afraid of happening to him that causes him to go to the dark side happens literally to Obi Wan Kenobi. His mentor, his actual Jedi Master that he talks to all the time and is like his best dude. So he's worried about losing his parent, right? Okay, that happened to Obi-Wan before it happened to Anakin. He's worried about losing Padme. Well, Obi-Wan has said that he would have left the Jedi Order if Satine had said something, right? This is his love, murdered by the Sith in front of his face. Uh, We also know that Anakin's afraid of losing Obi-Wan. And guess what? Obi-Wan actually loses Anakin. So this, this arc of suffering and for Obi-Wan to handle it the way a Jedi is supposed to the whole way while Darth Vader doesn't, despite the fact that Darth Vader is the chosen one, Anakin is the chosen one, Anakin is the one with the power. And here in this episode, this, this, this again, I agree with, I agree with DP, the best of the batch so far. We have Obi-Wan suffering, right? This path of suffering that he goes on. And he says, if you are strong, you can resist the temptation to do, uh, to fall to the dark side. If you have that strength. And it's exactly what Anakin will lack. Right. And that's like we said before, kind of goes to, you know, the Clone Wars and Palpatine's master stroke pulling everybody apart. Because at this period that Obi-Wan has went through this as a mentor, you want to teach this to your Padawan. But as we see them being stretched, he doesn't have time to really teach him be- to become a Jedi Knight. Because at this point, basically, Anakin is a self-anointed Jedi Knight without going through trials, without going through proper training, and not even speaking to Obi-Wan, because these are things a mentor, you know, a master, an apprentice would discuss. Loss, things like that. I mean, I, I don't think that Anakin knows anything about this. I'm sure he does know about Satine and half the things because they're so stretched, and Obi-Wan was so reserved in his judgment. Um, yeah. And when you're the chosen one, you don't have to go through any cycles. You don't have to, right. you don't have to follow the rules. He was the... He was already complete when he was a boy he needed some you know he needed some guidance he needed a mentor he needed to see experience things he was already the blueprint for what we are seeing now so he didn't need to become a jedi knight he didn't need to elevate himself to master he didn't need to have a padawan right he he was who he was already and and everybody saw that you know the 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 Obi-Wan saw it. Yoda saw it. Mace was re- really against talking right. to the dude, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah. I wonder why he, he had such a, such a premonition that this could be a problem. Who yeah, he was like, oh, really? no, <laughs> we don't need this guy any more powerful than he already is. He was really against it. So um, when you're that good, you don't need a, 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 a certificate. You're already you're already there. You got it. The the thing I'm I'm waiting to see, in which I, I know it'd be just revisionist like, you know, history and everything when watching um you know, when watching the uh, a new hope and like, you know, that that set of trilogy um episodes. Um is what Hitch brought up a while ago is the two things with Darth Vader. He had a close relationship with we obviously we you know you know he had a close relationship with Obi Wan and everything, so we see that. But we now see that he had the the definite close relationship with Ahsoka and R two R two D two. You know, mm-hmm. where is the reaction? Real? Where is the? Where is that emotional connection? Um, especially with R two because that was his <laughs> that was his thing right there. You know, that yeah. was his bot right. You know, droid right there. Um, 
and you know with ahsoka just being brought about and being so connected to anakin you know you would think that there was some there could be some story somewhere slipped in there as to 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 his connection to that which we don't get any of um i believe we yeah we don't get anything at all within that um that that um that second set of four through six dp to answer your question you get that in rebels uh oh, uh oh, uh oh! You get, you get those answers, and you get those answers in Rebels. And like I said, it's crazy because the way they the way they design these animations, they literally fill in so many. Okay, parts. okay, all right. I spoke too it's, soon. It's shocking. Soon. They, literally, the well, the work I can't they wait. did, the way they did to weave this this blanket, you know, to crochet this blanket, so to speak. It, it's when you start seeing this stuff, it's just like okay. wow. Okay, okay. When, when she says Obi to him like that. And then you think about in episode four when when Leia is calling him Obi Wan Kenobi and he says, like, that's a name I've not heard in some time. And it, like I'm I'm telling you, like, this is this is the degree to which this is enriching my enjoyment of media that I've been obsessed with for my entire life. It, I really am enjoying this this uh, this watch through so much. And this is really the climb the best climax so far. This is really the apex and it's yeah. excellent. Excellent, excellent. If you haven't seen these, say if you haven't seen these, you gotta really you gotta watch them. They're really good. I mean, we've been selling it, you know, hardcore. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. it's like you know, if you haven't, it's 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 just amazing that hardcore Star Wars fans and everything um, are still. I mean, you know, it's it, it it takes I guess selling to to convince people to come on board and everything, and I guess <laughs> some time to do it. You know, because I mean, it's a daunting task. It's a hundred and something episodes of this. It's like what, and it's animated. <laughs> but you know if you got that time to spend in your real star wars you know and, and then you still got like um you got like the comics you got like the books and stuff that you know you don't necessarily i guess have to read but if you're that into it then read them you know read them yeah you know it just just dig it in dig it in deep i know t mitch you i mean you probably read and you know a bunch of different stuff because i see it seems like you're you know you know your knowledge is like you know super deep you you also hitch you know um hey this is this is a very expansive universe these these last three episodes here the the mandalorian trilogy they they <laughs> they feel the most like a legends novel of yeah. any of these because you have the intersection of the sith you have the intersection of the Mandalorians, which are always big. Le- like these are two huge legends things. Like the Mandalorians are all over legends everywhere. Like it's it's like all it's rife with Mandalorians. <laughs> you right. can't get away from them. They're all over the place. Do so you get that? The Sith the mixture. Obi Wan Kenobi comes in at the end. The Emperor comes in at the end. And that's the sort of stuff that the legends would do. They'd build up this whole thing, and then they'd give you a revelation about a character that's specific to it. So Satine and Bocaton are siblings, and there would be a plot resolution with one of the side characters that's not in the movies. And then there'd be a lot of action. So pretty much Legends novel. Nice. Yeah. I think I think Satine was probably the only character on this show that, that really shocked me as far as her getting killed. You know, um, that was that was just. Well, that had right. to happen. I, was- I, I, I understand. Yeah. I understand. I mean, it, and, and for it to just hit like that and everything. I mean, I was not happy about that. You know, I wanted to see that uh, that relationship with her and Obi, like, you know, develop there. But I understand it had to happen because Obi is on, you know, a certain track, which we talked about, you know, his his is, is, you know, this grief, the grief and the heartache and the loss and everything is going to um, play into to how he is later down the line. He says, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to, to Bo-Katan the same way he says, I'm so sorry to Padme when he says, Anakin's the father, isn't he? I'm so sorry. Like he says it exactly like that. And it's, it's, and thinking about how those are the same sort of, like he has the same sort of relationship with each of these people, right? Where they're directly closely tied to somebody that he's directly closely tied to. Like there's a huge overlap with that person, you know? And, and, and the tone is so, is so similar. And again, it's, it's, it can read as a throwback to the movie or as foreshadowing for in the plot of the story. So it just is, it's, it just works in every dimension and it's really good. It's just I mean, every, if you're talking oh, about. It, yeah, go ahead, Ken. Oh, well, I was just going to say everything's so extreme. The emotions are so high for every, every little thing. And, you know, Oh, 
Anakin is the father of these two children that I know that are going to grow up to become the, the, you know, they're going to, they're going to bring the balance back to the force, you know, and, and he, he got to know that he has to know that, right. He has to have some idea that he's protecting this child now. And it's an offspring of his Padawan that fell to the dark side. And he bothered these two kids. I mean, it's everything's so big, you know, it's like a, like, you know, days of our lives, but like, cool you know yeah. uh, every, every it's just so so emotional and just all, every decision and it's not just one thing it affects it affects 20, everything yeah yeah everything that's uh, I, I love when characters cross over you know um especially when they have disparate stories from one end i mean you got like you know boca um <clears throat> You know, with the death watch and stuff, and we we're just seeing her. But I still have my knowledge of her through Mandalorian. So, yeah. I mean, she's a fully rich character to me. And seeing her talk with Obi, you know, that was that was a that was a nice little scene right there, you know. And for him to, um, you know, apologize and everything, as far as like you know the the, the revelation of um, Satine as her sister, you know, that was that was that was good. You know, it kind of reminded me of. Um, like I said, if you guys watch Game of Thrones, when um, Jon Snow finally met, uh, um, why am I not thinking of the the, the dragon lady, the the Targaryen? What is her name? Don't Hitch. Tell him. Nobody tell him. <laughs> Nobody tell him. Nobody say it. Nope. Then da- Daenerys, Daenerys Daener- Targaryen. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Hashtag hate DP. You know? <laughs> um for forgetting that seriously but um but when 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 the story is being told you know in a linear fashion or you know in a linear fashion and then finally you know characters meet you know this was sort of like a a little thing with obi and um obi-wan and um you know um boca 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 (laughs) you know meeting for for just that 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 you know um second you know during the fight and everything i don't know if they're ever going to meet again you know, but it was just nice to see. There are so uh-huh. many, like, this is an anchor point for so many of the things that are happening in Disney Star Wars and for so many things that had happened in Lucasfilm Star Wars. This is this is an episode, that, this episode 16 is, you have to see it. You have to see it if you want to watch and understand what's going to happen in these series that are coming out. This is definitely one of those episodes that, like, you should just you should just watch it. You should definitely I would say definitely this, this this three episode art, you know, that that three episode art from 14 to 16 and everything is is a must watch, you know, for any Star Wars fan. For sure. And and to finish off on this point here before we lead into the final episodes here and closing out the show, this whole discussion we just had made me even further realize how it's just watching this stuff together in these discussions and, and it is increasing my likelihood of the whole universe. Just makes me wonder how episodes seven, eight, and nine happen. Because, <laughs> and, and and just listen to this one point. We're talking about how the Skywalkers and all this. Then how does Ray? Be, how was it not a Skywalker? You know what I mean? Like it just or a Kenobi. Yes, yeah, so like when they're writing this, how is it not? And in, 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 you know, we'll get into this. Yeah. I know it's not this, but how is it not a Kenobi or a Skywalker? Like how do you? It, this is so we're talking about the circle and they break it there like how does that not end it we've seen it in legends and the expanded universe is being hit spread but how do you not keep that family going and just take I a would, name exactly i was so confident that ray was going to be a kenobi that i actually talked to people while i was standing in line to go to go into the force awakens i was talking to people in line about it and three people in, in front of us me and my wife and three people behind us, we all agreed that she's, it, it's it's a Kenobi, somehow. And had to be. Had to be, and it, was, and it wasn't. It was like some made up, you know, whatever. It wasn't just uh-huh. the thing they said that was, like the, the thing about that that made me so mad is that they said she was nothing and that felt like yeah. Yeah. good. And then they said she was Palpatine's clone no. daughter, no. right? Is that, am I, am I right on that? Am I clone right on what they said? Yeah. His clone, clone. Well, right. no, because the clone's just a clone of him, right? Right. His, his son was a failed clone, I believe. So it's his clone, clone's daughter. Right. So it's his daughter, right? Genetically. Right. Genetically, yes, yeah, his daughter. 
<laughs> I gave that movie a really bad rate. I don't know. You know, we could pull out the real archives and go into the old days. And, uh, you know, we can talk about that, that stupid movie. No, I, we'll I did not like it. that movie particularly. It feels like that movie came out a long, long, long time ago to the point where I had a cold and I saw that movie in the theater. And I didn't feel bad about it. Like, you know, now, like, I feel like so horrified. I'm excited to see it again. I'm not going to lie. So I can't wait I, to get to that. Yeah. yeah. So This is going to be a free-for-all by the time we get it there. It will be. It will we're gonna be, be. But uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be tussling by the time we get to the for sure. Trilogy. Like where where does it go wrong? That's gonna be the question. I think we're gonna have to answer. I feel like I could stay awake this time. <laughs> <laughs> but to finish off on this, guys, we're gonna finish up with a, what is it? Seventeen to uh, 20, 20. Uh, 21? Yeah. Seventeen. No, to I 21. think it's only twenty. I think 20, it's seventeen yeah, right. to twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Short run here and uh, four. For all, for all the guys, you know, wanting the answers on the Ahsoka series, this is kind of uh, this is Ahsoka's arc here. So, uh -oh. DP, I'm sure you're probably already watching this, but this will kind of answer the questions. Any this will further tie in more of the Mandalorian to you. Hopefully, this will develop into Ahsoka's story. But uh, really, really, really important arc for Ahsoka Kano here and her uh, life as a Jedi Knight. So, uh, yeah, guys, you know, we're gonna finish up there. And once again, I appreciate everybody listening out to uh, listening to us and um. You know, obviously subscribe to all our platforms. Please interact with us. But uh, until next week, guys, before we wrap up season five and, and head into season six, this is the way. This is the way. Nerd Cyclopedia.